For many people on Parliament Hill, Tuesday's agenda is already set. David Johnston, the former Governor General and current Special Rapporteur, will appear before the House Procedures Committee. The purpose? To answer questions about his first report on foreign interference and his recommendation against a public inquiry. Not to mention his pushback against a parliamentary motion that called on Johnston to step aside. Well, to talk about this, we're now joined by our Friday journalist, Susan Delacourt, is a columnist for the Toronto Star, Stephanie Taylor, parliamentary reporter for the Canadian Press, and Catherine Levesque, parliamentary reporter for the National Post. Good to see the three of you. Hi. Nice to be here. So listen, we'll, we'll get into Tuesday in a moment, but, I, but I, first I want to begin here with David Johnston's decision to stay put. As we know, the majority of MPs voted for him to step aside. He says he's not going to do that. So what does this do for the whole process, the, his report on foreign interference? Will that be trusted or is this whole process now tainted? Uh, Susan, I'll get you to start us out. I, I'm, you know, I say this regretfully because I'm, I really like Mr. Johnson, but I, I think this thing has become a circus. You know, and even as far back as a week ago, I didn't think that he could be in charge of the public hearings. You know, I, I, I'd suggest they'd, they'd do something different with them, have a different expert in charge of each one or something, but um, he's really dug himself in now, and I I don't know how they get out of that. I think all we've seen from the government so far is buying time, and um, maybe they think they can just weather it until Parliament rises. But I I think it's I I, I regretfully say that I think that uh, it won't work. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Stephanie? Because he, he still has work to do. He's been mandated to do something, not something, something that is fairly important, but, you know, to, to, to address foreign interference in the electoral process. Is it tainted now? I think an already troubled process got even more troubled this week uh, when Mr. Johnston actually responded and said, you know, essentially, thank you for expressing your opinion, Parliament, but I'm not going to listen. I get my mandate from the government. So now he's kind of entangled himself into this and we have to remember that this was like troubled from a troubled process from the start i mean it, it if we rewind the clock it took trudeau several weeks before even announcing that there was going to be this process of a special rapporteur and he got hammered for several weeks in question period and by opposition leaders calling for a public inquiry so when this process was even announced the liberals did it looking like it was a defensive movie looking like they were on the back foot and really since that has been announced in March they've had to explain and explain and explain why this is a legitimate process why people should trust this process why the opposition members are wrong and they still can't make this go away and we're not even necessarily even talking about the substance of the report which is something the Prime Minister charges all the time but at the end of the day it was him who made this appointment and it is on the Liberals who have set this process up, which doesn't seem to be answering or satisfying any of the questions it was designed to. Yeah, yeah, and it really is one of these cases where it seems like the horse is out of the barn. So, so what happens with with his report, Catherine? Oh goodness. Uh, well, I mean, he he will have he, these public hearings, uh, you know, possibly during the summer, during the fall. But uh, you know, his next report is due before the end of October, so that's coming up quite fast. You know, the question I have is, are, are people going to want to testify or you know to talk to him and and to be in these public hearings? I mean, you know, certainly we we had a, a poll this week in the National Post from Leger uh, showing that in fact, you know, barely more than a quarter of Canadians actually believe that David Johnston is is suited in this role. And we've heard from, uh, you know, groups uh, from Tibetans or Uyghurs, uh, you know, kind of criticizing David Johnston for s still being in that role, but also for the government for not uh, holding a public inquiry as they asked him to. So, you know, this is not just a partisan issue here. I think, you know, it's it's really a question of, of confidence, of you know, uh, do, do we of trust? Can we trust David Johnston? You know, I think he's he's shown in his report that you know he's actually done some good work, some decent work. But I think the question is now, you know, is he able to push against the government's narrative and to, you know, push back against, you know, what uh, CSIS or the Prime Minister's office would say and, you know, actually get to the bottom of what happened instead of just taking the intelligence, assessing it, and then presenting his report. Well, it's interesting to use the word trust because, as we know, the, the government has, has been criticizing the opposition, saying that they're essentially destroying David Johnson's reputation uh, for, for political gain, although, you know, arguably, or is the government destroying David Johnson's reputation by using him a as a shield? Uh, Susan, what do you say to that? 
You know, I, I think it's worth rolling back the tape to when the Prime Minister set this up, and he, he said something remarkable then, which was, frankly, nobody's going to believe a word I say. You know, I, there, there's a certain constituency. So that's why David Johnson had to be in there. So there was this idea then that, that David Johnson was the not Trudeau. He was somebody independent of Trudeau. And as Stephanie said, he kind of dug himself in with his statement this week is, I, 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 it's the government's mandate I'm following. And it was, that wasn't the way this was supposed to go. So um, I, I really think that was his statement. I think his op-ed in The Globe and his statement this week in reply to the parliamentary vote were both a little off. They, they weren't, um, yeah, they were discordant with the, the mood of the times too. And I, I, I had expected, which shows you how dumb I can be after all these many years, I thought he was going to step down uh, after the vote, but he's, uh, he's dug in. Yeah, dug in as you say, but you know, it, is his reputation being harmed more by the opposition or by the government here? Does it distract from the bigger issue of foreign interference? Stephanie. Stephanie Catherine. Um, look, I mean, I, I think, you know, either or could have made this decision this week, right? I mean, you know, David Johnston was asked to produce this first report, you know, he kind of offered to conduct these public hearings. Um, you know, the government could have also decided to just, you know, have hold a public inquiry and, you know, name a commissioner, you know, who would, this magical unicorn, which would, you know, satisfy everyone, right? I, I don't know who this person is, but, um, and, and David Johnston, you know, also had the possibility to step down and, and to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to have a peaceful summer and I'm <laughs> not going to, you know, deal with all this. Um, so, but it, we're, really what we, we're seeing from Mr. Johnston is, you know, like Susan said, I mean, he's said, uh, you know, two times already that he will stay, that he's committed to going through this process. And I, you know, I really think it speaks to his sense of duty and commitment. And I think that's, um, you know, that that's, that's great. I, I really commend him for that. But at the same time, I mean, look, you know, at the end of this process, but, what is his reputation going to be? You know, I, I kind of worry about that and, you know, because everything is going to be picked apart and um, especially also in committee next week. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie, what, what would you say about his reputation and how it's being used by, by members of parliament on both sides? There was something in his statement that stuck out to me where he acknowledged that he, he knew this wasn't going to be without controversy or it was wording to that. And I wonder if he expected it to get to this level and I, I and this whole debacle or this whole process however you want to characterize it really makes me wonder if folks were a little bit naive as to did people think did the prime minister did people in his office think did liberal mps on the front bench think that putting this process in place was going to take the temperature down because when the process was even announced that david johnston was going to be this uh, special rapporteur he was going to do this this report that he was a governor general appointed by conservative former conservative prime minister Stephen Harper if people actually thought that that was going to work especially in, in this minority parliament especially when you have opposition parties unanimously calling for a public inquiry and so I, I wonder for Mr. Johnston's part and we're going to talk about his committee appearance next week if he fully expected it to get to the level it has and I know when he was speaking to reporters last week he mentioned that this was the first time in his very long career that his impartiality had been questioned and he found it very troubling so I, I think some of this story is also taking looking at where are we at as a country in the political climate and the political climate of the commons at a time when you have the prime minister saying essentially let's take the temperature down and, and stick to the substance of this report which is no and he's he's kind of the only one in the room even saying this at this point yeah yeah only one as you say but l let's look ahead to tuesday as we know uh, david johnson will be appearing uh, it's uh, scheduled for I, I think 10 a.m eastern mm -hmm. when he'll he'll start what's expected to be a three-hour testimony what will you be watching for catherine Oh goodness, I, I think he'll be asked about the Trudeau Foundation a lot. I, I know he's been criticized by the, uh, the conservatives for not having touched that part. Although I think you know, with with all the committee hearings in the past few weeks, I think we've kind of, you know, went through all, all the all the facts and everything that that happened there. But uh, you know, certainly I think he, he'll be asked about that. I think there will be a lot of questions as to why he's not stepping down. <laughs> you know, why he's not re responding to the NDP motion that was passed this week. So I expect a, a lot of questions. I, I don't know if we'll have you know as as many answers as as we want. But uh, look, I, I think it's going to be a, a hard three um, three hours for him. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, what would you say? David Johnston is going to want to talk about his report and MPs are going to want to talk about David Johnston. So he's going to have to find a way to navigate 
himself in that situation. One thing I am watching for is whether Mr. Johnston does get any question or does have the ability to talk about what this hearing process is supposed to look like. Because as, as he says, he's decided to stay, he feels that it's a public service to stay. What is this hearing process going to look like? And I know one of the questions I have is how is this hearing process going to look any different than the committee appearances we've had up and up to this date? We've had two committees, we've had a number of government officials, both past and present, a number of members of diaspora communities who have frankly been testifying for years of threats and intimidation attempts at foreign interference. So I don't know if we're going to get there in the committee appearance, if we're talking about the Trudeau Foundation and the ties to the Trudeau family, but I think it would be very interesting to know from Mr. Johnston how he imagines the public hearing process of this working, which essentially he's saying, wait, my work isn't done yet. Yeah, and that's always the, the challenge with committees, right? How much of it is politics you're going to hear or, or substantive information that you're going to want to answer questions? Susan, what's your expectations? What are you watching out for? Uh, for the independence factor. I I would like to know whether those hearings or whether how much this process was that the Liberals again have not helped on this sco score there they've actually lifted words from his report like veiled in ignorance and thrown it back and it looks like the government and and the the Johnson process are working hand in glove you know so I I think if if I were Mr. Johnson I'd study up this weekend on presenting himself as his own man and as independent from the government as he can. Okay, well, we'll be watching and no doubt we'll reconvene <laughs> next week. But for now, Susan, Stephanie, Catherine, thank you for the time today.